Good morning. Welcome to Westwood Christian Church. I'm Adam Tomlinson, the minister here. It's great to have you with us today. There was a ring. Uh, I am especially glad to have the novices with us today. For those of you who don't know, uh, they uh, are one of the missionaries that we support. Uh, they uh, live most of the year down in Brazil, and they head out uh, to Brazil this Tuesday. So uh, if you think of it on Tuesday, be praying for them and their travel. Pray that, you know, customs is not a big deal and all of those kinds of things that can go wrong in travel. We will pray that it doesn't go wrong, but we are glad to have you with us today. A, a reminder for you that today is going to be a little different, a lot different maybe, depending on your perspective, than what we do most weeks. Uh, we have been in this sermon series uh, for a couple weeks where I talked about bearing witness to God, about Did we die? Oh, there we go. Talking about what, uh, what God is uh, up to around us, what God has been doing. Talk over here. Is this one on? Yeah. We were trying to use this so that you'll, anyway. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, or telling stories about God's activity in the world around us. Uh, instead of just hearing me talk about the things that I have seen God do, uh, I believe that one of the important things for us as a community of faith to do is to get used to sharing what God is doing in our lives. Uh, the, the scripture passage that we're going to read today, we'll talk about uh, that. And um, so here in a little bit in our service, um, I will come forward and I will begin us or I will begin this storytelling process uh, with us. And my hope is that these become moments where we celebrate what God is up to around us. I'm also excited because our, our downstairs children's teachers, um, they're actually going to bring our kids up so that they can hear some of our stories, right? I made the point a couple weeks ago in my sermon that my kids, our kids, one of the most important things for them is to hear the stories of what God is up to. That one of the most important things that you can do for my kids is to help them learn how to see what God is up to. That is one of the most important things you can do. And so it felt like they should be up here to hear stories that get shared. So uh, they'll be up here a little bit later on and, and, and uh, after communion. And uh, I hope that it will be a great time later in our service of sharing some stories of how we have seen God uh, at work. A um, couple quick things. Uh, don't forget to grab a Connect card and uh, fill that out today. Uh, let me know if there's any way that we can pray for you, any way that we can you know, call upon God uh, to come to your side, to come to your aid, to come to your rescue. But also, don't be afraid to put, hey, God answered this prayer that we've been praying, that we've been covering. Uh, you know, be, be sure and put that stuff on there and, put, and drop that in one of our two offering boxes. I'll get those and put them where they need to go. So uh, with all of that out of the way, before uh, our scripture reading happens today, um, I am going to open us with a word of prayer. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, Graft into our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from Mark chapter 5, verses 15. Morning, what? <laughs> <laughs> it said Chris Wales. It said Chris Wales on the screen, but you're welcome to read, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> they came to Jesus and saw the man possessed by demons sitting there, clothed and in his right mind. Obviously, I'm not. <laughs> the very man who had the legion, and they became frightened. Those who had seen what had happened to the man possessed by demons and to the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhoods. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that, my, that he might be with them. But Jesus refused and said to him, go home to your own people. Tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. 
and he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. And now our responsive reading from Psalm chapter 56. Bless our God, O peoples, who has kept us among the living, For you, O oh God, have tested us. You brought us into the net. You let people ride over our heads. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. Those that my lips uttered. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fatted calves with the smoke of the sacrifices of rams. Come and hear, all of you who fear God. I cried aloud to him. Let's now go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this chance to come together, to sing your praises, to read from your word, to fellowship with one another. It's so much of a blessing to be with fellow believers and to sense your presence with us this day. There's so much we need to pray for. We pray for our country and the turmoil with all the political maneuverings and the hatred and, and inability to see each other as fellow Americans. We pray for that. And we realize, Lord, that a large part of that is so many people need to know you, know your principles, your rules. We pray, Lord, that you would come into people's hearts, change them, and make them new, more like Jesus. We have several things that we need to pray about uh, that are on our prayer list. We think about Stella Muller and her battle with COVID. We pray, Lord, that uh, you'll protect her during this and uh, heal her very soon. We thank you for Nadine's surgery that, that went well and she's now home recuperating. Continue to be with her and, and help her Protect her from pain, Lord, is our prayer. We pray for Vicki and for her uh, treatments and that she's in for a six-week session. Lord, uh, may they be successful and you protect her as well. Adam's dad is still looking for a job and we pray for that, that, that uh, difficulty. Uh, Bring something to him quickly, Lord. There are other people who are dealing with sickness, with financial problems, uh, with spiritual problems of, of all sorts. We pray for your intervention with that. And Lord, we're so thankful that the novices are here uh, today to worship with us. Uh, we continue to pray for their ministry. and We pray for their safe return as they travel back to Brazil. Guide us now through the rest of our service. Help us to be able to tell our story about how you are working in our lives. Where we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Will you please stand? And we're going to sing some songs about how great our God is and how we can tell our story about him.
You may be seated. Read the uh, passage uh, from 1 Corinthians today uh, before we uh, take communion, before we join together at the Lord's table. You see, Paul is writing to a community of people who are abusing the Lord's Supper. Some people are eating when others are going hungry. And he says, this is not how the Lord's table is served. And then in chapter 11, he says, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took a cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. One of the reasons that our church takes communion every week is because Jesus says, as often as you gather, do this together in remembrance of me. But, but Paul does something that I think doesn't get talked about enough in this passage. You see, Paul says that Jesus tells us to do it in remembrance, right? Do this and remember me when you do it. Do this in remembrance. Do this in remembrance. And then Paul says, but when we do it, we don't just Remember, did you catch it? He says, when we do this, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. There is something active that we do. We aren't just remembering the past. We are proclaiming it. And we aren't just proclaiming the past, are we? We're proclaiming the future. You see, Paul tells us that when we eat and drink, and it doesn't look today the way it might have looked a couple thousand years ago, that's okay. But when we do this, we are proclaiming that Jesus has died and that Jesus will come again. You see, every week at Westwood, we bear witness to perhaps, maybe not even perhaps, Definitely the most important thing that Jesus or God ever did. Jesus, who humbled himself into the form of a slave, it took the form of a person, was born, lived a life that we could not live for us, died a death that we should have died or should die, and was raised to new life, trampling over death with death. Where, O oh, death, is thy sting, Paul says. It's gone. Jesus has defeated the sting of our sin. And Jesus hasn't just defeated it one time. He's going to come back at some point. And when he does that, we're all going to live in the fullness of vision of Christ, which I cannot hope for. I think it's what keeps us going. With all that said, we do as Paul informed the Corinthian church to do. We take a prepackaged <laughs> chalice, pull out that bread. Paul, quoting Jesus, says, this is the body of Christ, which is for us. Likewise, after supper, Christ took a cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. God, we thank you for the opportunity to join at your table we thank you, Lord, <clears throat> for the forgiveness that we experience 
through your death and resurrection. We thank you, Jesus, for loving us, becoming like one of us, living for us the life that we are unable to live on our own. All of these things are the work of your love for us and for your creation. Lord, I pray that we, as the song we just sang, that we would love to tell the story because we know it's true, because it brings us joy, because it is the hope of the world. Lord, it is in Jesus' holy name that we thank you and that we praise you. Amen. So, like I said, here in a moment, our, our children will, will join us, um, and, and we're doing something different today. I hope you're ready. I'm ready. Um, today we're going to tell some stories. In, in the, the Mark 5 passage that was read for us today, Jesus heals a man who has been uh, possessed by demons, so many demons, in fact, that they are like uncountable. There's a thousand of them or something. Holy cow. And uh, Jesus heals this man who's been demon possessed. And the man wants to follow Jesus. He wants to follow Jesus around. And Jesus says, no, what I need you to do, he says, I need you to go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And we're told that he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. You see, what this man's job from that point was, his task from God was to go tell people what he had done, to go tell his friends. So here's what we're going to do today. We're friends, right? I hope you consider me your friend. We are friends of one another We are family of one another. We today are going to take some time to tell stories of what God has done, what God is up to, in hopes, let me just kind of put my cards on the table. My hope is two things. One, that we can celebrate each other and with each other of where we have seen God, but also that together we might learn how to see God better at work around us. That is my hope for today. Um, Now, I have a couple stories that I want to share, not from my life. I'll tell my stories a little bit later on. Um, I'm also doing, I'm going to do these to give you just a little bit more time. You might notice that your bulletin has a little bit of space underneath where it says our stories. Maybe you think I shouldn't just get up there and talk on my own. Maybe I should jot a couple things down. Jot a couple things down that you maybe want to share. I reached out to our, uh, some of our missionaries that we support, and I said, hey, here's what we're doing this weekend. I'd love to share a story on your behalf if you have one. So um, the first story that I have is from Justin Burge, who is the executive director of the college ministry that we support here in town. He says, we have seen God show up in some really awesome ways in the staffing at his house this year. We have been praying for new staff for the past two years, and over the course of this past year, God has brought three new staff to our organization. Over this time, there has been a significant need to, learn, to lean in on the discernment and protection of God as we have turned a number of applicants away through this process. <laughs> and the children arrive. Come on in. There should be at least one more of you somewhere. (laughs) That's okay. Go sit down. So Justin says that recently we got to the final steps with an applicant, and in the background check portion of uh, 
I heard God tell me to include an education check, which I often don't include, his words. Through this check, I learned that the applicant had misrepresented themselves to us. This is but one of three stories of God protecting us against hiring the wrong person. I believe that God has brought together the staff team that we have for such a time as this. At our recent staff retreat, the chemistry of the team was the best it has ever been since I have been on staff. I praise God for his provision and protection and look forward to the year to come. We got this notification or this note from Ives, who you might remember was here earlier this year. Uh, <clears throat> God continues to do amazing things all around the world through Ides. Your partnership has recently resulted in rice seed for planting and homes to be rebuilt in Myanmar following destruction from the military coup. Irrigated farms for hundreds of people in the deserts of Kenya. Baptisms in a closed country following a clean water project and over 80 baptisms and 750 homes rebuilt in the Philippines as a result of the typhoon relief efforts there. I recently returned from Ukraine, Poland, and Romania, where you are helping provide food and shelter for four refugee camps that IDES is funding. These camps have provided thousands of sheltered nights and meals since the beginning of Russia's invasion. You see, I think that when we talk about God stories, it can be very tempting to think that what I am asking you to do is share a story of how God has healed somebody right in front of your eyes. They were missing a toe and it regrew. Those are the kinds of stories that we feel like we're asking for. But really, I am asking for us to watch God work in the everyday. Now, I will admit, uh, John, I have your email that you sent me here, but would you like me to read it or would you like to share what you have seen? Okay. John says, for four months on furlough, God has shown us how God has worked through his people in marvelous ways. Five people opened their homes to us to use even though they themselves were not there. They told us where we could find the key and said, make yourself at home and eat whatever you can find. Others put us up for a whole week. Some were friends, but one was traveling and we were complete strangers. When Ruth got sick, a three day stay turned into a six day stay and they were welcomed. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. So these are the kinds of stories that I want us to share today. We've got, you know, 25 minutes before our regular service time is over, but I'm fine to stay here and listen to stories as long as you have them. Let us encourage one another now. Now, I have a microphone that we saw how well I worked with this one a minute ago. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I'm happy to come to you if you don't want to walk all the way up here to share your story but I'd love to hear a story of God at work. Who has a story that they would like to share? Well, let me wrap us up so that anybody who has a roast at home, it's not, you know, burning. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you one story for me, and then, yeah, and then we'll wrap up service today. Thanks for staying long. But uh, so Tom mentioned and Ann mentioned, um, and maybe Marie mentioned. Anyway, we had this four day service event yesterday. And um, uh, many of you know that, like, my pitch for the last month, right, was we have outdoor stuff and indoor stuff because I know not everybody wants to be outside. So I email the principal of the school on Tuesday of last week, like, hey, are we all set? And she goes, well, we probably can't be inside. And I'm like, wait a minute. I have like eight people signed up specifically for inside work. What do you mean we can't be inside? Turns out uh, that the school had been doing construction all summer. And, um, you know, like many buildings built in the 50s, they found asbestos in there, and it took all summer to get that cleaned out. 
So on Thursday, um, you know, I, I'm preparing to send emails out to everybody who had signed up, and I, I sent an email or you know, whatever over to Becky and said, "Hey, just to confirm, like, no, out, no indoor, just this outside, not the, whatever." And I get this email back that says, "Actually, we were able we're able to get into school today." Um, but talk about I, I, I emailed said, I, I can't really imagine being a, a principal and not being able to be in your school building eight days before school starts, like they've not been in, in the building. And we have all of these people who sign up to serve and they come and they do things like sharpen pencils or, you know, do lamination work, all sorts of things that teachers need done, but they've got bigger things to do because there aren't desks in their classrooms right now because they've been unable to be in the, um, in their classrooms. I firmly believe that God, uh, you know, works things towards the good and, uh, ha you know, things out to get them into the school building so that we could get in there and help them with some things that needed to be done. And um, yeah, that's, that's a story. That's one of the most recent. Oh, I'm done with this guy. I'm dealing with that. Uh, with all that said, um, thank you to everyone who, who shared a story today. Uh, be on the lookout for God's stories. Uh, we may do this kind of thing again, where I ask, who's seen God recently? And I'd love for you to be willing to share your stories. Thank you to those who shared today. Couple quick things before we go today. Uh, I say this every week, uh, but for those of you who have uh, gifts that you would like to give, you can do that by dropping those in one of our offering boxes or going to our website and giving online that way. When you support Westwood, you support stories like this. Right, you support people experiencing God in real and tangible ways. So thank you for that. There are a number of announcements that I want to quickly run through. So we're going to go lightning round on the announcements uh, today. The first is that today, uh, I know Fordane was mostly yesterday for our church, but there is a celebration today at Lighthouse Church on Schrader Road. Did I get that right? Okay, thank you. Uh, on Schrader Road. And uh, we'd love for you to be there. Three to six, because of the threat of rain, it's all indoors. It's all, So you will be dry if you come to the celebration. Uh, the first two hours from three to five, those are all about uh, having fun, eating good food, uh, spending time with other people. And then from five to six, we're going to do kind of a worship set and then some storytelling. Maybe your story tell it out, but we're going to hear what God has done at other uh, churches throughout this weekend. So I hope you'll come to that. I want to remind you that you can sign up to be part of our uh, Stone Campbell Movement course. Uh, that is the sign-up sheet is in the lobby. I really just need to know that you're coming so that I have enough curriculum and that uh, when we start talking about food, I know if there's any dietary restriction kinds of things. Because my hope is that we will eat together while we learn together. Uh, the, the next thing Thing. Go to the next slide because I've I don't have my stuff with me. So, uh, speaking of Midvale Elementary School, they have a need that we can help with. On Friday, it is the first day of school for everybody first grade and up. Uh, they would love to have people uh, who get there early. They'll give you a vest that says volunteer or whatever, and you can help kids find their classroom on the first day of school. As you can imagine, for some of these kids, it's the, it's the first time they've been at school, and this is a way that you can help them uh, find their, their classroom. If, you show, if you're interested in that, let me know. I will get you the information that you need to know. I mean, it's going to be from like 745 to 815, not even really a long commitment on September 2nd, but that's a great way that we can serve our community. Uh, later that day in the evening, we're going to have our fall kickoff here at the church. Uh, the church is going to provide hot dogs, hamburgers, and uh, ice cream. Uh, we are asking everybody who comes to that to bring a side that you are able to share and then uh, either pie or cake that you can eat with ice cream, which is like all of them, except I guess not chicken pot pie. Anyway, um, sorry. And uh, 
we're going to have some fun things to do. We're going to have uh, badminton, cornhole, maybe some sack races, things like that. We'd love for you to come and spend some time together, and we'll see if we can uh, witness God uh, together uh, uh, this, this coming week. Last thing, on your way out on the table that is in the lobby, uh, we have some prayer guides. Uh, it's a 40-day of prayer guide. These were sent out uh, by his house, uh, Christian Fellowship. They're the, the um, college ministry that we support. And they're uh, starting tomorrow for the next 40 days. Uh, Justin has put together things for us to pray for, for the students at his house. This is a great way for us to come alongside students who we may never meet and ask God to come to their side, to ask God to reveal God to these students so that they will have the faith to carry them into the rest of their lives. So grab one of these on your way out. Um, like I said, it starts tomorrow, and then I would love for us to be a church covering a bunch of college kids with prayer. What a wonderful way for us to partner with them. Take these words from Ephesians with you into your week. Now to him who is able to do far more than we can abundant, sorry, I have a different version memorized in my head. Uh, now to him who, who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace with eyes for the Lord who can do more than we can ask or imagine.